Saturday the 7th of March 2020, Celtic 5, St Mirren 0. A five-star display from Neil Lennon's Celtic side to go 16 points clear at the top of the Scottish Premiership and take an almighty step towards a ninth league title in a row. Why is this game significant? Well, it was the final time fans were at Celtic Park. A near-capacity crowd took in that five-star performance from Celtic and we've not seen any since. We have gone 23 consecutive competitive matches at Celtic Park played behind closed doors. The almost inconceivable has become our norm. There we go, that was my best attempt at some sort of hard-hitting drama documentary opener. I doubt HBO or the History Channel are going to be getting in touch and taking me away from 67 Hail Hail anytime soon, but I thought I'd give it a go. Whether it worked or not, probably didn't, but that was just what I was working at because that is the last time that fans were at Celtic Park and I kind of feel like things are looking up a bit and I'm not just saying that because it's sunny outside and we're getting nearer to the summer. Things are looking up. If the pandemic was a 400 metre lap of an athletics track, I think we're getting into the home straight now. We know we're readying ourselves, we're taking one big massive gulp of air and we're firing for the finishing line. But when will fans return to Celtic Park and probably more pertinently, given the title of this video, when will we see Celtic Park full again? Well, the answer to that is obviously very difficult to comprehend. It's almost impossible to know everything that's going to happen in the next few months, just the same way as the last year has been pretty impossible to tell what was going to happen. I mean, we had no idea about phrases like self-isolation and words like shielding and pandemics and coronavirus and all of this stuff. So it's very hard to predict is the point I'm making. But I'm going to do just that in this video with the help of certain documents from governments and plans and roadmaps and all this kind of stuff out of what is a third lockdown. The first thing I want to touch on with regards to when fans can get back to games is when fans will get back to games, funnily enough. BBC and a few other outlets were reporting recently after some news down south that up to 10,000 fans could be at games by the end of this season, the end of May in England. We are expected to take it a bit slower in this country in terms of Scotland, but not too different. There's definitely room for optimism when looking north of the border as well. Recently, I think in the last fortnight or so, Nicola Sturgeon disclosed her roadmap out of this lockdown. And it kind of suggested, without giving any definitive dates, that we could have fans back at mass gathering sporting events by June. Now, the big thing that's hanging over Scotland with regards to big events, major events, is the fact that Hamden Park is hosting four games at Euro 2020, which has obviously been delayed and has been played this summer. But what does that mean for Celtic? Well, this season, I think you can pretty much write off the possibility of any sort of meaningful numbers getting to any Celtic game. In fact, I'd be surprised if there's any match between now and the end of this season that has any fans at it. Maybe there'll be a test event here or there, but I kind of feel like there's not much point in them because from this season's evidence, it was, you know, 300 fans here, 600 fans here. We really need to be talking larger numbers at this stage. So I expect no fans at any games between now and the end of the season. Next season, though, I think could be a very different story. First Minister Nicola Sturgeon teased us, I think, last week, as I do my Neil Lennon air quotes, with an actual normality that could be achievable as early as this summer. Now that is just the greatest phrase I've ever heard and the prospect of going back to an actual normality is just music to my and probably all of your ears as well. I think we reach a stage with this whole COVID scenario where we have to just get on with our lives without getting too political here. I think when the most vulnerable in society are vaccinated and they've had both of their vaccinations and if hospital numbers and death numbers are as low as possible I think we reach a stage where we have to almost open the doors and just say we need to get on with our lives. Now I'm not saying for a minute that there'll automatically be 60,000 back at Celtic Park for the next, first game of next season but I do think those kind of numbers of effectively full crowds are achievable in the medium to long term. And by that, I'm saying, you know, by the end of next year. You've got to ask yourself the question when the vulnerable, the most vulnerable in society 
are vaccinated and if numbers of deaths and cases and hospital numbers are as low as possible, then what's going to stop us going back to normality? And I think the politicians realise this as well. Boris Johnson down south, who I'm not a massive fan of, made a comment about England wanting to go back to normality and effectively lifting all restrictions at some stage. I think it was July or even August. I really wouldn't be surprised to see the same happening here and hopefully that would mean that fans could get back to Celtic Park in their normal ways that they did prior to this pandemic. Now I do still have worries about what happens in the winter months, the colder months when flu is more prevalent. We saw the horrors of what happened at the start of this year, post Christmas, and I do still have worries about what could happen at the same stage of next year. Maybe at that stage, if hospital numbers and case numbers are on the rise again, we may have to go through a period of reduced capacities or even, God, closed door matches at Celtic Park. But I do think the general plan for next season is far more positive than what we've witnessed this year. How could it be anything worse than what we've had from a fan's point of view this campaign? And it's just so badly needed too, isn't it? I mean, I don't know about you. In fact, I do probably know about you. You're absolutely hating no fans been at games. I feel like I went through a phase where it was a bit of a novelty at the start of the season and you were kind of like, oh God, this is what it's like. Like the, the first derby against Rangers will be really interesting because you'll hear players shouting at each other. But I was just so fed up by the game last weekend against them. Uh, I know the TV companies play the fake crowd noise and that's fine from a viewer's point of view. But the players aren't hearing that when they're playing. They're just hearing the silence and it really showed in the kind of game that was played, I think. It didn't help that it was a dead rubber, but I think the fact there was no real atmosphere from fans really hindered that match probably more than any other match anywhere you'll find. There's not really a match that's more dependent on atmosphere. And just on the note of the derby matches, I really hope Celtic are pursuing the option to get large away crowds back into these derbies when fans are allowed back. I think it's badly needed in the fixture. It's not been the same fixture over the last few years prior to this season. I think it's been two years we've had of the small away crowds at matches. It's not the same derby and hopefully Rangers are out of their huff by now after we partied at Ibrox far too much and they cut our allocation and hopefully Celtic are going to really put the pressure on them and hopefully they agree that we need to get derby matches back to what they used to be in terms of the atmosphere. But just having fans back in general is going to be amazing. I think we'll get a full Celtic Park relatively near the start of next season. I think certainly by September, October time, we'll be getting really good crowds at Celtic Park again. How Celtic build this into their season ticket campaign, who knows whether they'll wait for more concrete news on this. It's hard to know because they do need to put a season ticket campaign out at some stage. But it's just really difficult for everyone. The unknown aspect of all of this is still there. But hopefully over the next few months, things will keep improving. Vaccination numbers will keep going at really impressive rates. Hospital admissions and death numbers will stay down as low as they can hopefully get to. And we can get fans back at Celtic Park and away games as well.